Also on Facebook, we hope you'll post your prayers and requests and peace and everybody, we can wave and say good morning. So glad to be together on this holiday weekend. We hope you'll celebrate and uh, be a part of those celebrations this weekend, uh, but we're glad to be here together. Um, we started worship with red, white, and blues, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry, it's only a joke we get, so... <laughs> Anyway, we're so glad to be here together and to share this time of worship, uh, to be welcomed by God's hospitality into this time and space so that we can welcome others with that same love that we receive. So uh, we hope that that's what you experienced this morning. 
Um, but let's take a moment of, of silence and prayer and stillness and, and just thank God for this time. God, we're so thankful that you give us this song of hope, that you continue to infuse hope in us, even in those moments that we feel hopeless, that you are a God of great strength and we know that you lead us. So, Lord, we ask that you send that spirit to fill us, infuse us with your power and strength and that hopefulness that we can look on to this next day, this next week, month, whatever, with great hopefulness because of you. Thank you for the new life that you infuse into us. We give you praise for that this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stay standing and join in singing. a new band member, Kashak, is singing with us for the first time, so this is a new life, right? And we'd like to say that Shaq is going to do the message today. Right, right. Sit down. (laughs) We were joking that he had to share his whole life story, and we're just glad to have you, man. Thanks for sharing your gift. 
Thank you also for being here. Um, and I invite you to have a seat. And uh, if there's any kiddos that want to come forward, I'm going to need your help with something. Come on up. Oh, wait. i got to turn it the right way. There we go. Anybody know what this is? What is it? A sweeper thing? Did you ever use one of these at your house? Like a broom instead? Yeah. So um, do you have chores that you have to do at home? Yeah. What do you have to do? What's that? Make your bed. That's a good one. Clean the bathroom. <gasps> wow. Nice work, Mom. <laughs> what do you do, Ruth? Clean your whole entire room. Not just make the bed. Whole entire room. Wow. Wow. Do you have any chores that you do? Brush your teeth. Yeah, you got to take care of your body. Sorry, there's one little piece over here that I keep wanting to get. Okay, all right, all right, I'm done. So, yeah, we all have chores that we have to do, right? And sometimes we like them, and sometimes we don't, right? Sometimes we'd rather not do them. They're not always easy. They're not always fun. And I hate to tell you, but growing up, like as an adult, chores don't go away. In fact, they get bigger. So I want to invite you into just kind of observing that chores are necessary and that Jesus actually calls us to do some chores. We don't need to sweep. Well, we could sweep for Jesus. That's fine. Clean the bathroom for Jesus. But he invites his disciples in the gospel reading today to do a few things, to bring with them wherever they go the peace of Christ. Does that sound like a hard chore? Sometimes it can be. We don't feel all that peaceful all the time. But to invite others and for them to know that you're a person of peace, that because you love Jesus, you bring peace with you wherever you go. So sometimes that will not feel like a chore. Sometimes that'll be pretty easy. Other times it's hard. But Jesus calls us to do hard things. And his disciples, guess what? He sends 70 of them out to share the peace and love of Christ. And they do it. And they come back with such joy. God, look, Jesus, look what we were able to do in your name. We were able to tell people all about you. And they knew your love and joy and peace. So sometimes those chores will be hard. Other times, they will bring us joy. So I hope when you're doing those chores, when you're making the bed and kind of you don't want to clean the bathroom, maybe you can find something in it that brings you joy. Okay? You think you can try that? Maybe next time? Okay. Let's pray. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for Jesus' love. And the peace that he gives us, that we can take with us wherever we go. Help us to be your peaceful people. And do your work in the world. Amen. Thanks so much for coming up, you guys. And I think Miss Jessica has some fun things planned. And I hope, Phoenix, you had a great time at camp this week. Awesome. Very good. Yeah, we had five kiddos at camp this week. I think Caden, Caden went too. Did you have fun? Yeah, awesome. Good. Good. Well, I was realizing the other day that it's been a while since I've talked about um, Awaken Dane. This was a project uh, that we were selected for. It's a million dollar grant that the Lilly Foundation gave to a couple of organizations in Dane County. Um, I don't know if you know that Dane County is one of the highest percentages 
of um, non-church affiliated people in all of the country. So I don't, the, whatever the population is, I think it's 40% is unaffiliated with any religious a activity. And so this project was uh, kind of proposed and, and got this wonderful grant. And we were one of the 14 churches selected in the first cohort um, to be a part of this, to kind of see what God is up to in Dane County. What can we do about addressing that need? Because I don't think those folks that don't have church affiliation aren't seeking something, right? So that's, that's the particular lean. So... The reason I haven't talked about Awaken Dane is because we don't have a whole lot of, like, outcomes. Now, that's not because we have not been doing our work, right? And I should tell you, the folks that are on our team, uh, Dave Beckengel, Leanne Havertape, Deb Colway, Louise Miller, Tom Olson, Tamara Oman, Greg Sheevy, and Kathy Scholl. So, I mean, if you know those people, you know they're not slackers. So, we haven't been slacking but this, the project, the, especially this first year, is all about observation. It's all about paying attention to what's happening around us so that we can do something about it, potentially. Which, if you ask anybody on our team, that's really hard, right? You join a church team because if you see a problem in the world, what do you want to do about it? <laughs> Fix it, right? Solve it. Do something. Have some kind of program or, or invitation or something to do about it. And I would think that, for me, that has been the hardest part of this first year of Awakened Dane is that the call is to just listen, to just pay attention to what God is doing in our communities. Then we go do something about it. So part of our task has been to be centered around one text in Scripture this whole time. So every time we get together with our congregational team, with the pastors gathering, we read one text from Luke chapter 10. And guess what our gospel is for this weekend? Luke chapter 10. So we're going to do what the Awakened Dane team has been doing with this text. It's called Dwelling in the Word. And if you've done Lexio Divina, it's very similar. I'm going to read the text twice. And I want you to be thinking about, like, what are some words or phrases that stopped me, that caught my attention? And what might the Holy Spirit be saying in the midst of that? What is it about that word or phrase that means God wants me to think more on that, okay? So we're, I'm going to read it twice, and then I'm going to want you to turn to somebody around you to kind of share these ideas. So uh, you may have to turn seats or be in a triad. That's fine, too. Uh, but we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this. So are you ready? All right, thumbs up. This is Luke chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no bag, no purse, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its pe people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet 
we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. So take a minute to think about those things that the Spirit brought up for you. And hear these words again. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, these are the questions. What caught your attention? A word or a phrase that kind of jumped out at you? Maybe you don't have a reason. That's fine. But what jumped out at you? And then what do you think maybe the Holy Spirit might be saying in the whole passage to you or through that word or phrase? So I'm going to have you turn to somebody close to you. If you don't know them, please introduce yourself. And we're going to spend a little bit of time doing this. For those on Facebook, if you want to post on in the comments your thoughts, that's great. Let's spend a little time.
All right, did everybody get a chance to share? Sorry, I know you've got a big group over there. You wanna, maybe one more minute. One more, okay. Well, I would love it if you continued to have these conversations over coffee and such after worship today. Um, I was telling Brian and Connie I don't ever get a break in the middle of worship, so that was kind of <laughs> <laughs> That's not why I did it. That's not why I did it. Um, all right, anybody willing and able to share kind of some of your thoughts? What did you hear? What caught your attention? Where's the Holy Spirit leading you in that? Any, any of those insights? Anybody want to share? Oh, now you're going to be quiet? Come on. <laughs> yeah, Ken. Oh, hold on. Ken, I'll, then I'll get you. Especially oh. Oh a gosh. mic shoved in your face. <laughs> I don't need a mic. <laughs> Not feeling comfortable with that statement. Um, because it's, I mean, like, I just watched a show on um, the Mormon religion, and they make a big deal about wiping the dust from their feet is a very negative connotation. Yeah. Um, I felt like the other thing we talked about was that I just feel like we're quiet Christians, and is that okay? Mm. We did resonate with the idea that you went into a house when you were welcome, and you shared peace. It wasn't that you broke down the door. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So that, yeah, the idea about we're quiet Christians, but that's, that's hard. If you're trying to be inviting, it's hard to be both inviting and Christian unless you can get into the conversation somewhere. Right, and, the, and that sense of hospitality that, you know, is it hospitable to wipe the dust off your feet? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And Dave, you want to... Brian, I'm going to make you run. Okay. <laughs> Just well, I, I'm a little different. I don't remember when I went to, first went to Sunday school because I was two months old. My mom was my first Sunday school teacher. Oh, nice. So I grew up in the church, and I felt the Lord. Sometimes after I got through school, he told me to, Dave, I need you to go to youth group, to take charge of that, teach Sunday school, and do all. And uh, I, I just follow the Lord, everything. And uh, if you do what he, and so many times, the Lord said, I'm going to do this to you, or it's going to happen to you, and I'll be with you. Nice. And if you ever feel like, you no, know, never feel, feel that um, he's with you all the time, no matter how, because one time, I was in, uh, I had an operation, and the doctor told, uh, told my mother that I wouldn't make it through the night. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, I had all the nurses, doctors come in the room and said, we didn't think you um, was going to make it. But I said, God gave me the strength and courage to go through that night and woke up and and yeah, and, and the, that invitation to serve and always do the next thing that God asks you to do. That's wonderful, Dave. Thank you. Awesome. Any other things? Kathy in the back? So we talked a little about um, the part where you shouldn't greet people on the road. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> That's all we're about is greeting strangers. Right. So after talking about and thinking about it, um, 
we thought maybe it meant don't get distracted from what your real purpose in life is. Just don't yeah. get distracted. Yeah. Did you read my sermon? Because that's what <laughs> I'm... <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Did you want to say something, Jeff? Yeah. I get it. You got the baton, baton going? <laughs> sure. Well, he doesn't like to talk in public, so. Um, we talked about a lot of the things like Ken brought up and what Kathy brought up, the whole idea of like you read it and it seems harsh. Like some of the things seem harsh especially like uh, wiping the dust up and it's gonna, and if it goes on, it talks about it's gonna be more bearable for the people in Sodom who yeah. completely just got destroyed in a, in a snap of a finger, more bearable for them than those people that don't. So it seems harsh, but the reality is that whole scripture, he's, he knows the thick skin you have to do, have in order to do that work. So he's like giving them that thick skin. So don't right. get wrapped up on because all, the, like Kathy said, all those distractions on the road that right. can take you this way or that way, you totally. never get to your purpose. But then there's that thick skin of like saying, you can't save everybody, you can't, you know, you're not gonna reach everybody, but we all know that God is not gonna like wipe his, he's telling them to wipe yes. his feet. God's not saying, hey, I'm gonna wipe my feet from those people. Right. It they seem harsh, but a lot of it is just, you know, you need thick skin if you're gonna do this, period. And right. We still and, do today. And you know? keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't yeah, and don't don't give up. Here, I'll take it. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think that sense of the. There are a couple things that kept coming up to me when we would read this for Awakened Day, and different things would always um, words or phrases the Holy Spirit would bring up, but I think the first thing that always jumps out to me in this text is the the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I think that's kind of what is happening in our world right now, right? That post-COVID, there's it's just hard for anybody to find workers, whether it's a job or a volunteer. Um, but, you know, Jesus isn't talking about hiring. He's talking about how we are tasked with this sharing of the gospel. And that that is, it's not going to be easy. But what I find so comforting in this text, it's 70 I mean, that's probably, like, there's 70 of us here. If it, if, if we're us, Jesus is going to send us out in pairs to all the places he intends to go. We do not go alone. We do not go to a place that is God-forsaken, right? This is a task that, that we are employed, we are tasked with, called to do, because the Lord has empowered us to do it. And so we know, like as Dave said, when the Lord asks you to do something, he gives you the strength to do it. And that wherewithal and that persistence and all of those things that it takes to bring the news of the gospel of peace. We had a wonderful uh, conversation on Wednesday, at Wacky Wednesday, about sharing your faith. Janice led us in this great devotion about how hard it is to share your faith because there are these perceptions that, you know, faith is private. It's not something we talk about. Or maybe they'll think I'm weird. I'll just be one of those Jesus freaks, right? I don't want to make them upset or feel uncomfortable or guilty. All those reasons why we don't share our faith. But this is the task, is to bring this word of peace with us wherever we go. There's this great quote from Teresa of Avila, an early church mother that said, Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. That's a hefty, hefty task. But that's what we're called to do, is to share the love and peace of Christ. The harvest is plentiful. There is not a lack of people out there needing the love and peace of Christ. But we're called to go and bring that with us. 
That's the other thing that always kind of strikes me in this text is as, you know, as we talk about what, what to bring, it says, you know, don't bring purse or bag or sandals. I'm getting ready to pack for Boundary Waters. And the, the packing list is rather minimal because you have to carry everything. You don't want to bring a whole lot because you're carrying that and a canoe. So you want to pack lightly. But that is so not my norm. I am an overpacker. Like 10 pairs of shorts for a weekend trip. I'm not kidding. No, maybe not that bad. But I mean, like... This is a challenge to bring nothing with you. But I think it is, like Kathy was saying, it is Jesus saying, don't let those things distract you. Even, even greeting people on the road sometimes, even a cell phone going off in the middle of worship. <laughs> Sorry, Ken, I had to say it. <laughs> I mean, like those things that can distract us away from the gospel are all over the place, right? Right? And so I, I, I really do think that's what he means by carry no purse, no bag, no sand. Don't even greet anyone, which to our Midwest nice is like, I can't not do that? Come on. But I think that is the sense of like, don't, dis, don't, don't get distracted away from your path. Because only you can do this work. Only you can speak to this person. And may not, it may not be that everybody jives with how you bring the gospel of peace, but somebody will, and somebody needs to. It's, it's kind of urgent that they hear this word. And that's the piece that I love is we don't bring all this other stuff, but what do we bring? As I said with the kids, we bring the peace of Christ and the notion that the kingdom of God is near at all times to all people, whether they listen to you or not, the kingdom of God is near. The job is simply to bring those things with us. So how are we at doing this? As I said, I think there is a real crisis of faith in our area, in our nation, and in our world. I saw this phrase the other day that made me pause and then made me cringe a little bit. There was somebody in an article that talked about how they felt like the world was being taken over by Christo-fascism. Oh, I mean, what, what are we going to do to reclaim what it is to be Christian? That being Christian is not about who you keep out, but who you welcome in. That being Christian isn't about a set of rules you need to follow in order for the Lord to love you. This is the welcome and love of Christ that is already in existence as you are right now. Not where you think you ought to be or where somebody else thinks you ought to be. What are we going to do to reclaim what it means to be Christian? I think we have to go back to this text, that it is all about bringing the peace of Christ and the kingdom of God that is so near we can touch it, we can breathe it. That's what I think he's talking about in this text. It's hard. It's going to be hard work, and not everybody is going to get it. But your task is to wipe the dust off your feet and keep going to the next town, to the next person, to the next conversation where you can bring the peace and love of Christ and it will be welcomed. All that other stuff is like the baggage, the unnecessary stuff. Don't bring the rules. Don't bring the exclusion. Don't bring the who's in and who's out, the proper behavior for a Christian business. Don't bring that. The heart of what it is to be Christian is to bring the love and peace and welcome of Christ. So as we celebrate what it is to be American this weekend, I also want to think about what it is to be Christian, to follow Christ's command, to bring with us wherever we go the peace and love of Christ. 
to let people know that the kingdom of God is near and that that's a really good thing. A kingdom that's all about the love and joy and bigger tables instead of taller walls. Go tell the world that this is what it means to follow Christ. It's all about love and welcome. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that your spirit inspires us through the word, through conversation with one another, that hopefully these thoughts will just stay with us for a long time this week. To be reminded that you call us to do hard things, that you call us into those places that maybe we're not always comfortable, but that you go with us. You wouldn't give us that task if you didn't intend for us to do it and to do it well and for it to bring us and others around us joy. So, Lord, help us to notice those times where your spirit is calling for us to have a conversation with someone, to invite them into your love. Make those conversations possible this week. We ask with a little bit of trepidation, but so much trust. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand as we're able and join in singing. See my hands and look at my feet. It's okay if it's hard to believe. I have faith that you'll do greater things. It's my time to go, but before I leave.
song of Jesus gathering his disciples before he ascends, just saying, I've got to go for a little while, but I've got a task for you to do while I'm, while I'm gone. So go tell the world about me. And I just, I love that image and, and the compassion and love that I feel Jesus sharing with his disciples in that moment. So I just love that song. So thank you, God. <laughs> anyway, we're so glad you're here. And the peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Share that with one another. Share that on Facebook. We're so glad you're here. Peace, peace, peace. Awesome. All right. You can have a seat. A few things to tell you about. And uh, first of all, thank you for the ways that you support this ministry with your prayers and your financial gifts and your volunteering. It, it makes all of it possible. So thank you. Thanks for the ways that these guys give of their time. And, and if you're like Jack, that yes, yes. Um, if you, if you feel like you want to try this out, just uh, l let us know that you'd like to um, kind of be a part of, of what it is to, to lead worship and be a part of, of the band, and um, we'd love to have other folks up here as well and rotate you in. It's, it's a wonderful gift. Um, I kind of see it as a small group uh, ministry, so we pray for each other, we pray with each other, so... Thanks for all the ways that you do that. And um, thanks for the concert and um, the cookout last week. It was a wonderful time together. Uh, thanks to Mad City Funk, as always. And, um, and to our Jessica and our youth uh, for the cookout. It was great. Um, and so we have some extra treats today. So if you want to stay after worship, there's uh, drumsticks and ice cream sandwiches. Perfect, you know, 1030 snack. <laughs> so it'll be great. Sugar them up, send them home. That's the goal of youth ministry right there. So um, also after worship today, we want to invite you to help out with the super sale. I know not everybody has hours and hours to give, but we're going to stay for one hour after worship today and do a little sorting. Um, there's a lot of donations that have come in, and so we like to kind of put them in categories so it's easier for people to shop. Um, but if you'd be able to stay and help out with that, that would be wonderful. Uh, we'll, we'll, we've got many tasks to do. If you can't stay today and would like to help other times, we also have those tasks um, that you can come in whenever it works for you. Just let us know. Um, the Wednesday before the sale, so the 13th of July, uh, we'll also be doing some sorting in the evening and then obviously getting ready for um, the sale Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, so if you can help during the sale, the sign-up sheet is out there. Otherwise, uh, you can talk to Lynn or Janice, Jolene, um, let's see, Kathy. Uh, yeah, so there'll, there'll be plenty of people that we can um, put you to work. So if you're able to stay today, that would be great. We do want to have donations by next Sunday so that we can sort them and have them ready for the sale. So if you have things ready to bring, uh, bring it before next or by next Sunday. That would be great. We have a self-defense seminar that a professional is offering. Um, there's these little flyers that are bright yellow out in the, in the entryway. You can take those um, to coffee shops or whatever. Um, it's free, and you don't need to sign up. Just show up. Uh, a way of just feeling more confident or just getting some skills that you don't have. Um, so if you want to ask about that, Kathy Nelson will uh, give you some details, but the flyers are out there, and we hope you'll uh, be a part of that or share that news that that's coming up. Vacation Bible School. I can't believe that August is going to be here before we know it. So uh, if you haven't yet signed kiddos up, there's the registration forms outside the office, uh, but we'd also love to have extra helpers. So that information is also outside the office door. You can talk to Jessica, myself. There's other folks that are already signed up to help, but we'd love to have you. Um, it's going to be a wonderful week of farm fun-friendly festivities. I was trying to come up with another F word, but yeah, not that one. So... Um, so we are hopeful that we are still going to be able to be at the Wondrose Pool on Wednesday. Thank you for inviting us, and uh, we will have a wonderful time. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, 
So Wednesday evening, somewhere around 5.30, uh, we'll keep an eye on the weather. Uh, if that date needs to change, we will put it in the Wednesday email, so pay attention to that. Um, but we're hopeful that Wednesday night we'll be able to gather for a little bit of pool party time. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have some things there, but if you want to bring snacks and food and beverages, that is totally fine. Uh, but thank you to Deb and Ken for, for providing that time and space for us. And we'll have the address and everything in the Wednesday email as well. A uh, wonderful way to know some of these things is this little flyer on the way out. You can grab one if you didn't already. We're so glad to have you here. Um, let's, let's spend some time in prayer and lifting our joys and concerns to the Lord. Let's pray. Lord of the harvest, you send your church out into the world to proclaim this thing called a new creation. Renew us as we carry out your mission of peace and healing. Lord of the nations, guide all leaders so they aren't tempted to exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirit to eradicate classism, inequity, sexism, racism, violence, war, poverty, and hunger. As we celebrate this nation's Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence in working toward freedom for all people. Lord of the hurting, you care for those in need. Nourish those who are hungry. Restore employment to those who have lost work. Heal those who are sick. Comfort those who are dying or grieving. We especially pray for these people in our community today. Shaq prays for continued healing of the body and for confirmation on God's plan. For Maggie's sister, Linda, undergoing health issues. Continued prayers for Margie and Tom. Barb Zimmerman thanks everyone for their prayers during her illness, and we pray for continued healing. Vicki Teagan prays for steadiness and strength. Judy prays for her move to Cottage Grove, rewarding by doing good work. Lord, all those prayers on our hearts and minds, we know that you hear them. Lord of abundance, you have set before us this plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness now and strengthen, are strengthened to labor in your field. Equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these prayers into your holy keeping. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord invites us to this table. This is the best welcome we could ever receive. So come, all is ready. We do invite everyone to commune at New Life, including children. I do have gluten-free wafers in the front if you have that need. Come, all is ready.
know broken and I know lost I know just keep running at any cost and I know sickness and I know time and I know living deep this small little wafer and grape juice comes a big blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand as we're able and send ourselves out.
Shout it from the rooftops, you are good.